龍蔵寺武士団のお抱え闘争衆炭蔵の25振り。Yo. Yo. Yo. I can get behind this Kitetsu Blade auction, man. Hello, 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 everybody. It's Salaviathan, and we're back with another reaction. We are continuing Orient episode 7 today. Okay, let's, let's do the recap. Very short recap. Not a lot, not a lot going on in last episode. It was um we off screen that battle with the Oni and the feet Oni and things like that. So that got resolved really quickly. Sugimi left her village. She joined up with Musashi and Kojuro, and they all jumped on board and went on an adventure. Now, Sugimi, that there was a funny scene with like Sugimi, Musashi, and Kojuro and their whole dynamic and things like that. It was really hilarious last episode, and I enjoyed it a lot. But one of the more eventful things about um last episode was the fact that um you know we had we had that new guy come in we didn't learn their name like the the two the duo the guy with the gray hair and the and the girl with the with the staff and the and the skull on her head or whatever wearing the skull those two are very interesting we didn't learn their names we didn't learn anything but they they're very mysterious and i think they're they might be bounty hunters or something of that sort i don't know if they had bounty hunters or or i guess some mercenaries for hire in in this world but from what I can assume, I think that's what they claimed themselves to be. That was really cool. I like to see that. We learned a lot about Ketetsu Blades now. A lot more than we knew before. We learned the fact that, you know, they, they have to kind of be... Um, I'm not really too sure. I, I think with this episode, we'll learn more about like what the criteria is for a specific Kitetsu Blade. Because last episode, we had Musashi pick up one and it exploded after he used it. So I feel like it couldn't handle like his specific... Pa like I don't, I don't know. There, there wasn't... A, it was an incompatibility issue, I think. But now we learned that you can just get a... You can just buy a Kitetsu Blade. That's what Sukumi said. You just go to a shop and buy a Kitetsu Blade. So that's what we're doing this episode. So I'm excited to see how that's going to turn out because if he... Is he just going to go into the shop and, and they're just going to like look for the one that like is like compatible with him or is it going to be like... It's it's or he's not gonna buy one. I, I don't know. We'll see what happens this episode But um, yeah, we're gonna get started with that. Don't forget to like share and Subscribe down below and turn on notifications as well. So, you know when I upload next Make sure you also check out the patreon link also down below as well You know you get full-on cut reactions of this show many other different things check it out really worth it You know, we, we also get we're also gonna get like some future polls going on there soon. So, you know, <laughs> it's gonna be a doozy man <laughs> I'm like overhyping this shit too much it, it's still very new but you know I'd appreciate all your support on there as well it's only it's only a dollar so it's definitely worth at least checking out for sure but um yeah with that though we are gonna get started with Orient episode 7 going to be an interesting episode I can already tell and um yeah we're just gonna jump right into it so let's go oh no you never start an episode with people gambling man come on that that never turns out well. This is actually pretty amazing. I'm actually I'm actually hyped for this episode because we're gonna learn a lot of Bushi lore. I know it. I just know it. Okay, I just had like a quick point that they made when they said they, they used Kitetsu as currency. So if they use Kitetsu as currency, that's, that's so messed up, man. Aren't these people supposed to be together fighting the Kishin to save the world and unite the world of Hin Hinomoto? It sounds like everybody's kind of just um, competing against each other to kind of be the one who unifies the world of Hinomoto, you know? So yeah, there's a lot of competition going on here, but let's start start with the with the actual episode here. Yo, ちゃんたちどこの武士団だいえどこのってそういや断命が決まってねえななんだってそれで鬼退治しようなんて思ったのよそりゃもちろん夢のためだよなこちらおおどっちが団長なの Oh, that's a very, very important question. Very important question. Because you can't have both these guys in charge. <laughs> Huh? Eh? 
I mean, I, I respect that though too, because like he 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 comes from an actual family of uh, Bushi, so like he kind of has that like lore, I guess. Karamaki, yeah. I love that shit. I love I love that I love that broship type of thing, man. Look at look at it, look at her, man. Look at her. <laughs> Yo. Yo. I can get behind this Kitetsu Blade auction, man. What is she wearing under there, right there? I don't want to touch that with a 40 foot pole. Yo, she doesn't she doesn't know what his fetish is, man. He loves them older women, man. But she looking she looking good, yo. I I, I can't even hate on Musashi, yo. She's a good older woman. Good aged. But I was right though, it is about compatibility. Like you need to find the blade that, that feels right for you. ロクブイチゴキン。ああ、いや、いや、see とにかく Oh, so that's what was happening last episode. When when Musashi was picking up that blade, the the stones were gray, so those so it wasn't compatible with him. The vibrant colors here are really nice. I like it. ブシがその身に宿す魂には色があるんだよ。刀が同心に含む鉱物の種類によって様々に輝きを変えるようにね。全部で5色。それによって季節刀で発揮できる力も変わってくる。お前さんの色は青だね。さて、武蔵の色は
幻だきっと次は大丈夫十七番十八番刀の試し成功俺だって今度こそくそなんで俺だけこんな風に Okay, so I don't think it has anything to do with the sword. I think it has something to do with his own past. But this sucks because now he can't be a bushi, and that's all he's wanted to be. The Tamashi no Iroga Krok Tankasta Monoa. Don't knock it as Tony Mo Imi Kira or a Kyotet Sarechima. Imi Bitonanda Tamashi no Iroa is so Kaira and Inda. Aoi Monoa. Oh my god, so they're saying that his soul, his soul will always have to be black. There's no way that you can compare farm work and like and like um doing like a uh, menial labor and whatnot to the glory of battle. <laughs> oh, the lightning one, man, that we were seeing before. What? <laughs> Yo, this is impressive. This is the first time we've seen Kojiro actually step up and do something. No, man, it's not because of the sword, Kojiro, man. It's not, man. This guy, this guy lives his whole life feeling like, like invisible, like in other people's shadow. Look at him, man, though. Like, he, he's just feeling left out, man, and I hate that. I hope we figure out more about his past as to why he's not able to get a Ketsu tattoo blade and why he's forsaken. Oh, they're 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 about to go up and fight that damn Kishin. This is good. Good story progression. I think I I don't think we have enough time to get all this stuff settled up in this episode, but definitely next episode we're gonna see a metamorphosis go Yo, my dude's back already? Yo, interesting. Interesting. I'm excited. I, I okay. I, I I I'm excited. Next episode is gonna be good, cause. Like, you see the big smile on my face now. Now that the fact that we have a lot more lore with Masashi and he came up to him, that guy, and he's like, Hey, dude, what's up? I saw you during that sword trial. <laughs> anyway, um, stop that. Let's do a quick recap. So, 
what what I thought was going to happen this episode happened. We we learned a little bit more about Bushi. We learned a little bit more about Abushi's soul, which is the aura that they exude and whatever. That's what I was talking about before in the last couple of episodes before, like the aura. I knew it had some significance and I'm glad it does because it makes sense now. Um I was also right about the compatibility thing that the sword needs to be a good match and a good fit for you or else it's not going to work. So I was glad I'm glad that that in itself got cleared up as well. Um we saw we saw Kojiro kind of actually now really now I'm actually starting to like Kojiro's character a little bit more here cuz now before I felt like he was just kind of like going along with what Masashi wanted the whole time like I didn't really feel that burning desire to hunt Bushi in, in his heart you know what I mean like there was still that desire like he was a Bushi but there wasn't that burning desire to go out and fight the Kishin and and unite Hinamoto but for the first time in, in since this series started I really saw some met a change in him you know especially when Masashi made him the leader he's like you're gonna be our leader you know I think he really I think he really understood that and he took the responsibility of that he's like if we're gonna do this I gotta take it seriously and I like that a lot now Musashi is forsaken I don't know what that means it means that hit the color of his soul is black so we learned that there was um we learned that there was um five auras for a bushi it was white yellow um uh blue blue green and red was like the the top one right and then black was forsaken, which means you can't use a Kishin blade. But then we saw the guy from la the episode previously, prior, and he came in and he's like, "Hey, dude, what's up? I just saw you uh, fail that sword challenge like epically. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Your aura's like me though, right? Black." And he pulled it out, which is interesting because I know I know Musashi eventually gets that sword, but I want to know if he if he's gonna still be forsaken. That's one of the more interesting things that I actually want to see going into next episode because. We're learning a lot more lore, and anytime we have any information dump or any information lore, especially in a show like this that has been very void of information in the beginning, I am very happy for that because now we can actually move on and start to understand the plot a little bit more and the power system a little bit more. And it's not as like um, random as I thought it was before because now they're actually explaining things, which is great, and I love it. That's that's top top stuff. Can't wait for that next episode. This is actually the first time. Because, like, Orient is an interesting episode. It's an ex exciting show, but it's not, like... It's not, like, the greatest thing in the world. Like, it, it, to me personally, it's not, like, the greatest show in the world. I, I find it entertaining, but it's, it's entertaining enough. You know what I mean? But this is the first time I've genuinely been excited for the next episode. You know, this is the first time. So, we're gonna see what happens, honestly. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm all for it, really. So, let's jump right into that whenever we get a chance to. But, with that note, I will end this video here. I will see you guys around. I hope you guys all stay, stay, stay safe, you know. Stay stay great out there, you know. Keep, keep following your dreams. Keep doing them. You can achieve them. Do what you wanna do. That's the best advice I can give to you. Shitty rhymes for shitty times. <laughs> I'll see you guys around. Bye.